Hey guys, I'm Santa Cruz and in this video you're gonna find out how I made my portfolio and how it got me into Central St. Martins. I'm gonna split up this video into three parts. First part is gonna be how I planned the portfolio, basically what research I did, how I got to thinking about it and organized it. The second part's going to be actually making the portfolio. What did I do in Keynote, which is what I used, how did I lay it out, how did I structure it, etc. etc. Finally, the third part, I'm gonna show you what my feedback was when I showed it to, uh, to graduates and other students, what are the adjustments I made. So I'm currently picking up the equipment for my school to film this video, so I'll see you guys when I get home. Jack it up. All right, we're here. So before I even started doing anything on the portfolio or trying to design things or anything, I started out by researching everything I could about how to make a portfolio and what UAL was looking for. So here, I'm on UAL's uh, site and they have a whole page just dedicated to portfolio advice. I downloaded this portfolio guide. I watch all of these portfolio videos. Basically what I did was I went on my iPad and I highlighted or, or noted down everything that I felt would be useful for my final portfolio. This video in particular, this what to include in a portfolio, I think I watched this video like five times over, at, at least five times. To begin kind of directing what area my research would be useful for and how I'd start crafting my portfolio, I looked at the selection criteria for my course. And that really gave me a lot of insight because I could basically pick out which criteria I was strongest at and then I came up with projects that would best exemplify those criteria. So I had this brainstorm and I, I literally listed out all, all almost all of my projects that I felt would in any way show any sort of selection criteria. Then I narrowed it down into which selection criteria were the strongest that I felt would show me off as the best candidate in a sense. So this page, which I showed in another video, is basically all of the design things I've done slash am doing. Once I had this sort of holistic list of everything I've done, I went in and picked out which ones were portfolio worthy. My initial thought before I got any feedback on this was that the first project I should show, sort of my hero project, would be the works I'd done for Vicente Cruz designs. Then came another visual thing, which is my, my work on MH Customs, which was my first sort of large project. Then came my IVR pieces. But you, as you will see later, when I got feedback on this is that it was very, very sort of 2D and visual heavy. And the advice that I got from older students was that while these were good to show my background, it didn't show enough about where I wanted to go as a designer. And so my, my final um, content layout or co sort of content structure for the portfolio was I should add more 3D projects, even though they're not as strong because it shows, you know, progression, development and sort of areas to improve and that's always good because I mean why if, if I was already a pro professional at you know 3D design and I could you know use solid works like the back of my hand then why would I go to this course so they want to you, they want to see you know finished works but they also want to see areas to improve and um, room for development I had to show my 3D work before a lot of my 2D work because if I did that if I didn't do that then the um, admissions officer might lose interest before they even get to the areas I could improve on for my 3D work next is on to how I design the portfolio For my general portfolio design I was inspired by Apple SpaceX and sort of Tesla's design theme especially from the, looking at the website because they wanted something that could kind of show what type of design I, I like, which is more minimalistic and modern, but also something that wouldn't take away from the project and it would be able to show them off in a very nice, neat way, but without being too distracting. Actually creating my project, I used Keynote. Um, I would have used InDesign, but I wasn't too confident with it yet. I just basically used the presentation program that I was most comfortable with. I would have used Google Slides, However, I felt that as it progressed with the portfolio, it would, it would load pretty slowly because of the, the large file sizes. So starting out within the first few projects, I kind of treated them like drafts in a sense. And I, that's when I, I used them to flesh out what my portfolio looked like. And I decided on a theme and a general structure for the portfolio. This sort of consisted of mainly white background, something really simple with 
a few shadows and very light borders to show a distinction between elements, but while also keeping them, I guess, more, more down, more downtoned. So as you can see in my portfolio, the way my projects work is that I started out with one key hero image and that would be what draws the admissions officer's attention. Then I go with a brief, then references and ideas, sort of inspiration things, the, the key development points, and that shows, again, that shows that progress. And so as you can see here with this MH Customs project, I started out with the visual identity, um, with the, the, the final design, then I went back to the beginning, showed that progress, showed that development, showed those, the cho showed choices that were being made, and kind of leading the designer, or rather leading the admissions officer with me on that journey to the final design when I show what the whole brand identity, identity looks like. Uh, again, here with the, the Tower Queen project, I started out with the key hero image in a sense, what the Tower Crane looks like. Then, start start again with objectives, the sort of the brief that we were given, moving on to problem solving, process. And so as you can, actually, as you can see here in these paragraphs, I bolded the words that I felt were most relevant to how the admissions officer would read them. So that way they can actually easily skim and see what things I'm including in my portfolio and what are the choices that are being made. For example, on this problem solving page, I designed our own custom members and joints. There I bolded designed, custom members and joints, and concepts I created. So just from reading those seven words, without you having to read the rest of the paragraph, you can understand kind of what I, what I contributed to this group project. So you can see on this page, those are the visuals of those concepts that I created. The next page, similar thing, 3D printed miniature beams, modeled the crane in NX, you can see that in, in the bottom right. And then you can see uh, me creating engineering on engineering drawings that's in the top left. Again, that, that just helps with the admissions officer understanding what, what you've designed, but also being able to just skim it. Because frankly, they, they don't read every word on the page. And a lot of this is filler text that is good for if somebody wants to look in depth into each project. But most of the time, it's more like to, to back up what your, your, your main points. So really, in theory, if I really wanted to sort of minimize the text on this portfolio, in this portfolio, I just take bullet points of those keywords. And final design, you'll see that there are no bold things, but that's because I actually want, I want the, the admissions officer to focus on the final design. I want them to focus on the before and after of the crane before and after testing. That, that's, that's why the sort of top and bottom photo take up most of the page. I want their eyes to go from final design and then go straight to the right and see, I don't actually want them to read that long text. I want them to see the crane, and that's why I've darkened the background of the crane, blurred it a lot, and made the crane sort of stand out so it can pop. And that's, the, that's sort of the first thing or second thing that they'll look at. So that's the before. Then comes the after, which is the, the crane bending at the base. So you, you, what you'll see here is you kind of go from final design, then the before photo, the, the after photo, and then there's this arrow that will sort of lead the, lead the admissions officer's eyes back to the bottom left image of the bend in the crane more zoomed in so they can see where was the main failure in, in the crane. And then if they want to, if they have more time or if they're really intrigued, they can read that, that whole text paragraph. But really that text wasn't too, I felt that it wasn't too necessary and most people are, are visual people and so they just want to see things. They don't want to read it. So that's sort of the general structure that I used for my portfolio projects. So I started working on the portfolio kind of around early May to late May, but I didn't really end up finishing it until June, Ju like sort of late June. And for a good month, I dedicated a few hours every day to working on the portfolio and making a little progress. There were some days I woke up and I just didn't feel like doing anything, but I still kind of forced myself to even work on half a page or work on some visuals that would contribute to the next day's page when maybe I'd wake up and I'd feel more refreshed. I felt that just sticking to the schedule of working even just a little bit on the portfolio every day really helped with making the whole thing come together. Working a little bit every day helped me to keep momentum. So if one day I felt I was feeling a bit down or I just, just wasn't really in the mood to, to work on my portfolio, reminding myself of the streak of days that I had gone working on the portfolio even when I didn't feel like it 
made me made me work on it just because I wanted to keep that streak up. I just wanted to sort of keep working on it. I wanted to be able to get it done as well. A lot of the time, I'd, I'd work on the portfolio just to get it out of the way. When actually designing the portfolio, I really played around a lot with the layout. Let's take the final, uh, final design page of my Apple Pencil stand. For this final design, I really wanted the final image to pop. I wanted it to be the main thing they look at. And then afterwards, I wanted them to realize that, oh, this image kind of looks and reminds me of Apple's marketing. And so that's why when you're looking at it, you can see at the top, I really, I purposefully reduced the, the font a lot so that when they're finished looking at the eye candy, if they want to learn more, then they can read up here about the functions, the target user groups, the personal reflection, just more development things that are useful for, for them to know that I've thought about it, but it's not essential for them to know what the final design looks like. It's essential in the sense that they, they do want to know that you have thought about these things, that you've thought about the development and where things may have gone wrong and how you've made adjustments and tweaks to what you've done to your, in your final project. However, at the, end, at the end of the day, they want to know what the final thing is. And that's why this image takes up the whole last page. And then at the very, if they, they really want to learn more, they want, at the bottom, I put outcome. This product was rendered in an X. You know, that's, that's little details. They don't need to know about it. But if they want to, they can. They can find out that this was difficult since I am still unfamiliar with the software NX. And during the course, I am to develop a fluency in CAD. So they can learn more about me and how I develop my things. However, it's not essential to each final page. And so that's kind of how I broke down structuring each different page layout. So for every visual element, I made sure to answer three basic questions in a sense. So does it serve a purpose? I didn't want any element in there to be fluff, to be useless. I, I wanted each element to add value to the final, the final portfolio. Looking back at the final design from my Apple Pencil stand, you can see here that it does resemble an Apple ad in a sense, kind of. You've got the big bold font, the same, I use the same fonts. And actually these learn more and, and buy links, they're almost like Easter eggs. I wanted them, the, the admissions officer to, to sort of wonder, can I click on these links? And so when you hover over it, I made it link to an apple.com forward slash unfortunately not for sale link. And then the next one uh, to the right is still not for sale, haha. And so I thought these little things for me, I felt like it did add value to my portfolio because it showed a little bit of who I am, a little bit of my humor in, uh, as a designer in a sense. The next question is, is it relevant to an industrial design portfolio? Well, arguably what I just told you doesn't add too much to my sort of industrial design background or lack thereof. It does add to giving more background into who I am as a designer, who I am as a person, sort of what are, what are my uh, quirks, what are, what are my unique personality traits, what do I find funny? In that sense, it's not too, too directly related to industrial design. However, if we take a look at another element in in that same project. In the previous slide, in the problem solving slide, each image there and each element was necessary. For example, looking at this top right, there's there's these red lines that show what the contact points or, or the division points are of that object. And it shows you know, a development of how I went from the sketch where there's an elevated bar on, upon which the, the bottom of the Apple Pencil stand sits on. And then in the, the, the final CAD rendering, I've remove that elevation and kind of just made an indent in the bottom plate. The last question is, what type is it? And what I mean by that is, each element in there should fall under a few different categories. Is it an outcome? Is it an experiment? Or is it documentation of my progress and process of the project? So what you'll see here in my portfolio is that every sort of text box, or, or rather every caption, uh, which relates to every image, gives context to what they are in terms of the, the project as a whole. And so looking at this idea as an inspiration, you can see these two images here are, are documentation about other products that inspired the chosen design. Below that, more sketches, more documentation of um, second preferred designs. And then on the left is sort of the, the larger image as a whole of my experimentation. By answering these, these two questions, it allows the admissions officer to see that there's more depth to you as a designer, but also to not, uh, to not let them be overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information on each page.
looking at the development of my portfolios, you can see there's quite a there's a lot that has changed in terms of the, the small little tweaks to each portfolio between the first the first portfolio that I submitted to my first university versus the final one that I submitted to, to my top school. So looking here at my Loughborough portfolio, um, basically what I did for each different university was I changed the title page for the different courses. For Loughborough, they called their, their course Industrial Design. So I just said Portfolio for Industrial Design. UAL called theirs BA Product and Industrial Design. So I changed this, the title. I also wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz and make it a little bit more fancy. So I added my signature and this little summer 2020 to show kind of that there's more portfolios that I have or that I will have. Moving on to the next page, immediately there's a difference between what project I wanted to show first. So first is branding for my visual identity business. Here, it's just one simple business card design. However, in the feedback that I got, well, what was better was to show my strongest visual identity project, and that was my work for MH Customs. So there's that difference in projects. However, if I go to my work on MH Customs, you'll see even then I start out with totally different key hero images. In the first portfolio I sent, I started out with this really cool looking background of, you know, customized cars, which is sort of what the company aspires to do. However, it doesn't give a lot of insight into what I've done in terms of the project. And so it looks cool, but it's not too necessary. And also I added this MH Customs logo here because I thought, you know, they want to see the final design. However, while the motivation there is good, it's a little bit unclear because you've sort of got two things battling for the admissions officer's attention. On the other hand, in the final project, I've got here a really brief rundown of all of the stuff that I've done for the company and what that looks like in context. And so immediately this gives a lot better of a a picture of what I've done in terms of the project than this other image here of just a, a, a really cool looking background. Looking at the layout, there's there's quite a lot that has changed between these two projects. In the first project, I started out with my own branding, where whereas in this other project, I start out with my really strong visual identity for Mitch Customs. Then I move straight into 3D, whereas in this project, I don't go into 3D until, let's see, that's three projects in, four, until four projects in. By that time, in that first project, if they weren't interested enough, they'd have lost interest in my portfolio because it's a lot of 2D, 2D and visual things, not a lot of 3D area for development and progress. And actually looking at this, at, at this first draft, I can see how a lot of the changes I made made a lot of sense in this final portfolio. Yeah, I've got two projects in the 3D 3D space showing exploration. Actually, even though it's really cool to show, you know, entrepreneurship and self-motivation, etc., etc., I put my the branding for my business last and I re removed a lot of pages. So you can see here, I thought that this branding for my visual identity design business, I thought this was, you know, a key thing. I thought it was it was what's going to sell me. Whereas, in fact, there was a change of priority and it's, it's actually what shows more depth to my character. Whereas it's not, it's less so of my selling point and more so as my, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Um, and so here, this, this actually took a lot of courage for me to remove because making this slide right here on my first por portfolio, this took so much time because I had to, these are individual images. So I, I had to take a picture of each individual color of notebook and binder and then bring into Photoshop, then layer them on top of each other, then you know, work on these little these these shadows and these reflections, like here this is slightly blue, this is slightly green, and this is more more so yellow. Um, and working on this one page took about as much time as working on this page and half of this page. And so moving this page took a lot of courage, but in the end it was worth it because it turns out that even though I put so much time into this and it does show a lot of sort of history and previous research and experiments, like that's cool to see. It it was one page that I felt wasn't necessary in selling me as a potential product and industrial designer. So yeah, that's, um, that's my development. One of the last things I want to touch on is how does the advice compare between types of people who you ask? So I didn't ask my like my parents or friends that were close to me because they might just say, oh, that's really cool. Like, oh, oh, that's nice. Like they, they give filler compliments, which are, I mean, I guess they're nice, 
but they don't give me feedback. They don't give me really relevant feedback into what I need to do to improve the portfolio. And so that's why I went out of my way to go on LinkedIn and go through UAL's graduate list and try to reach out to as many people as I could in, in my given time, time frame and ask them specific questions into how can this be improved? Like, what do you think of this page? Uh, if you're free to give advice, what do you think of my portfolio? Would you be able to give me um, tips on how to improve it? If I were to ask my parents, they just say, oh, that's cool. Why did you add this element though? Which they might think, oh, this element shouldn't be there, but I'd have to, I guess, in a sense, waste my time explaining to them how that element is necessary. Rather, professors, teachers, counselors, and current students or graduates, they would understand my exact aims and what advice is actually relevant to improving the portfolio for my, my main goal, which is getting me into the course that I'm looking at. So as you can see, working on this portfolio really took a lot of time. I, I started you know, sort of thinking about it and planning it out late April, then all throughout May and all throughout mid, or up to mid June, I was working on the, the portfolio every, every single day at least a few hours a day. Working on it could be researching, could be uh, visualizing, could be taking images, trying to figure out in design inspirations, and sometimes even as simple as just thinking back, trying to, to retrace my steps as to how I, how I got a final design. It was just this, this really, this process of keeping up the moment, momentum of working on the portfolio every day. So for my final closing points, I'd say that you should emphasize that each element needs to contribute in some form or another to the case that you are the best candidate for the course. And it needs to show that. And so for my final, final point is don't waste time on making it look pretty. It looks pretty when it's done and you know that each element is necessary, informative, and unique. So that's the video guys. If you like this video and you found it really informative, then please leave a like. Comment below what what tip that you felt was most relevant. And if you do end up using some some of this advice, let me know how your portfolio goes. And I could even look at it uh, if if this video doesn't get too too many, too many views. Then uh, you know send me a link to the to your portfolio in the comments, and uh, maybe I can take a look at it and give you some feedback. And with that being said, good luck and uh, check out these videos for more. All right. We're done filming. Peace. Let's go.